of a life gospel meeting. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, that you are a wonderful Father. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for health. We thank you for happiness, Lord. We thank you for provision. We thank you for supplying all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God, I commit this meeting into your hands. I pray that your perfect will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray that you will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think. Lord, I pray all your people's needs will be met over and above. I pray that I will be led, guided, and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Lord, have your way. Let it be all of you, none of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we welcome the Holy Spirit and we thank God that he will be exalted in this place today. He will be magnified in this place today. He will be glorified in this place. So we lift him up in praise because he's an awesome God. He's a holy God. He's a wonderful God. And he's an excellent provider. Lord, we thank you for the uh, perfect viewing audience today. And we give you honor and we give you glory. Today I will be ministering to you on rejoice. Rejoice. <laughs> The Apostle Paul commands people to rejoice in Philippians 4, 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And I say again, rejoice. So we need to rejoice. Why should we rejoice? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We give God honor and we give God glory. God is beautiful for every situation. I'll be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. And if I switch, well, I wouldn't because there's no other translation in front of me. <laughs> So I'll be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Hallelujah. Yes, he says, the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, gladden yourselves in him. Again, I say rejoice. So he reuses the word um, rejoice around three times in that verse. Hang on, one time, two times rejoice, and he says gladden. So gladden means to rejoice anyway. So he basically re uses the word rejoice twice in, in this short space of time, and then he says gladden as well. So uh, we need to rejoice in the Lord. Why do we have to rejoice? Because in the world we'll have tribulation, but we need to be of a good cheer because Jesus has overcome the world and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. When we're sad, we're not strong. We're not acting strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When, when we're um, sad, we're not walking in faith. We're walking by sight and not by faith. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So let's begin our um, sermon, Rejoice, by beginning to read with read from James. So please open your Bibles and turn to James chapter 1 and we'll be reading verses 1 to 2. James chapter 1, comments in verse 1. And James is the author of the book of James, <laughs> which anybody would probably say that's easy. It's called James after all, so he must be the author of this book. And he is Jesus's brother and he had an um, intimate relationship with Jesus. He knew Jesus very well and he uh, commanded the people who he was speaking to to rejoice. It wasn't a suggestion, you know, he, he, when he said count it all joy. So if you count it all joy, it is the same thing as rejoicing. So let's begin by reading James, a servant of God. So he was a servant of God. He was a friend of God. Many people want to be friends of God, but they don't want to serve God. Abraham was called the friend of God, and he became the friend of God simply by believing God. Whatever God said, Abraham believed. He trusted him, and he had childlike faith. Hence, he was called the father of faith. Some of you might be saying, I'm hearing about faith so many times. Faith, faith, faith. What exactly is faith? Well, the King James Version of the Bible begins its definition of faith with now. So... In order to have faith, you must have faith now. It was great that you had faith yesterday, that you believed God to supply all your needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus yesterday. But you need a faith for today. You need the saving faith. We take the shield of faith 
that's believing God and that's a shield that I know that I know that I know that I know. And when you really believe God, it's a shield and it will save you and it will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So the wicked one is Satan. He is known as the dragon, the father of all lies. You can find that in John 8 verse 44. And he's the father of all that's false. And if the truth stared him in the face, he probably wouldn't recognize, recognize it. Because Satan only comes to steal, kill and destroy. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He is the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives. Praise God. Hallelujah. So giving is a good thing. Praise God. Whether you're giving by um, giving, uh, giving a word of encouragement, helping that old lady lift her um, shopping across the streets. Praise the name of Jesus. You can give in prayer. You, you can give in tithes. You can give in offerings. You can give in friendship. You, you can give food, you can give by um, complimenting someone, you know, um, keeping their company. There's many ways to give and God so loved the world that he gave. Praise the name of Jesus. And in giving, there is joy because in Acts 20, 35, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Praise God. And when we give, it's given back to us in a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over measure. Praise the name of Jesus. Say you gave God a... Um, one can of um, coke. Praise the name of Jesus. And God can give it back to you. You can get a truckload full of coke. We probably won't even give you the coke because <laughs> it may not be the best thing for to, um, the best nutrient in your diet. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he might not give you a coke. He may choose to give you something else in a good measure, press down, shaken together, running over measure. But, um, the example I'm, I'm going to give, say like if you gave God one kind of Coke, he'll probably give you a truckload full. And it's so much that it has to be pressed together, shaken together, running over. So it's the fill this vehicle up or this large truck with these Cokes or whatever it is, whether it's a car, whether it's a bus you sold into the kingdom of God, whatever it is, you know. And God gives it back to you it's so much. And then he has to press it down, shake it together to make sure that it all gets in. It's not like when you have a packet of crisp and then they just push it in and probably pump it up with air. Or it may appear to be full of air with more air than crisp or whatever. But when, it, when he gives it to you, it's compact, it's compressed. And you have so much that you'll be like the um, rich man in Luke 12 where he didn't have anywhere to store his goods. So um, James was beginning to tell us, praise God. James, first of all, he was described as a servant of God. Praise God. So if you want to be a friend of God, we should serve because God gives, we should give. That's a part of his characteristics. But the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 to 23, tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness. So goodness is Giving, whether it's a smile, praise God, whether it's um, giving yourself to the ministry of God to serve others. And James was definitely a servant of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So he was a servant of God and a friend of God, like Abraham was a friend of God. And of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered abroad among the Gentiles in dispersion. Greetings, rejoice. So he saw the brethren and he was enthusiastic and he said, greetings, rejoice. I can imagine he probably gave them a hug, encouraged them to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he was um, increasing their fight because he was teaching them the word and telling them how to um, react in times of trouble, in times of tribulations, in times of turbulence, in times of um, when they were believing God for something. And it seemed everything they were believing God for was not going to happen. Everything was going in the opposite direction. Then they have been believing God for um, a healed marriage. Praise God. And the more they believed, it may have appeared to be like their husband, the wife or the spouse, whoever the spouse was, was going in the opposite direction. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm just giving that as an example. You know, the, the, the spouse might have been having an affair or whatever it was. And as they prayed and believed God, it seemed like if things were getting from bad to worse. If the, if the spouse had one, one sexual partner outside of the marriage, maybe he was starting to have six, seven other partners as well. And, and it looked like if things were not going to happen, praise God. I'm just giving that an example. I'm not saying that's exactly what was happening. Or if they were believing for a child to be saved 
the child's behavior may have been going from bad to worse. So the more they pray, it seems like if things were getting worse and worse and worse, or they may have been believing God for finances. And, and instead of all their needs being met according to his riches and glory, it appeared like if things were getting worse and worse, the more they prayed, the more red letters were coming, the more bills were piling up, the more the um, debtors were coming at their door to collect money, like the woman in um, 2 Kings chapter 4. Praise the name of Jesus. Her husband was a servant of God and she served the prophet Elijah faithfully. Elijah, sorry, faithfully. Praise the name of Jesus. And the man of God died and he died and he left her in debt. Praise God. And this situation seemed impossible. It seemed like nothing right would happen in her life again. Not only was she mourning, praise God, the loss, she was mourning the loss of her beloved husband. But then she had debt collectors to deal with. He died. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, he was a faithful man of God. He loved God. He was a friend of God, but he was very weak in faith. And he didn't believe God to supply all his needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So um, she was left in debt and, and she had her sons. Praise God, the two sons. And not only was she was dealing with the loss of her husband, but the debt collectors came and they were going to collect her two sons. Praise God to be sold. You know, hallelujah. So um, she went to the man of God and she uh, explained the situation. And the man of God said, what do you have? Praise the name of Jesus. So some of you are thinking, I've got nothing to give God. All I've got is debt. I've got burdens. I've served the Lord for so many years. Not only my, my husband died, but my children have died. My friends have died. I've experienced so much loss and now they're about to take my home. Praise God, but I'm telling you not to give up. I'm telling you to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So this woman, her husband died. The debt collectors came. They were going to collect her sons. Praise the name of Jesus. And she went to the man of God. So God is a present help in a time of trouble. Praise God. So when you're in trouble, you can turn to God. And if you're going to be wise, like um, the Bible tells us about the story in Matthew, um, I think it's 25 or somewhere around there, they had five wise virgins praise god and five foolish virgins praise the name of jesus the five wise ones they went ahead and they put extra oil in their lamps but the foolish ones they, they didn't put anything extra in their lamps so when the bridegroom tarried and he was late praise the name of jesus and then he was going to come praise god and the oil had just ran out yes it's matthew 25 and they said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil, you know. So they, they um, wanted to be there when the bridegroom came. And the wise ones wisely told them, you go and get oil for yourself. Praise the name of Jesus. So they weren't going to give away their, so they weren't going to run out. And so even though it was good information for the wise virgins to give them, it wasn't good information for the um, foolish virgins to receive. Because when they went, they, they were doing the right thing, but at the wrong time. And when they were looking for oil, the bridegroom came and they were not there. Praise the name of Jesus. And when he came, they were not able to enter in. Praise the name of Jesus. And when by the time they came, it was too late. So we need to um, get ourselves together. I pray God you will help me to get myself together and always be in the right place at the right time to be early and be prepared to, to uh, meet the bridegroom. Because Jesus is coming back and it may be sooner than we think. Praise God. And even if it's not in our lifetime. He's going to be coming back, you know, and um, when we die, we need to be ready. Praise the name of Jesus to go into heaven. Praise God. I won't want to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter it to the joy of the Lord. Praise God. We don't want him to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I knew, I knew you not. So the woman in Second Kings chapter 4, you know, she and her husband had served the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. And um, the husband died, left her in debt. All she had was a pot of oil or she had a home. Praise the name of Jesus. And the man of God said, what do you have? She said, she has this oil. He says, go and um, get, collect containers, you know, from your neighbors and so on. Get plenty of um, containers. And she and her son went. She could have questioned the man of God and saying, this is foolishness. I've come to you. I'm having a desperate need. You're telling me about collecting containers. And if she hadn't obeyed the man of God and she'd argued because where there's strife, there's every evil work, she wouldn't have received her miracle. So she went, however foolish it sounds, asking people for um, containers. 
And then when she and her sons came back, they shut the door and they started to pour the oil and it continued to pour until all the containers were filled. And when the containers were filled, she said to her son, give me another container. And he says, there no, there's no more. And then the oil ceased. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank God she didn't just stay there with um, loads of um, containers of oil. Because sometimes God can give people a blessing. And because they don't know what to do with it, it may seem like a curse to them because she could have said, look at my house, it's full of oil. I can't clean, I can't tidy or whatever. Praise God. But she went back to the man of God, Elisha, for counsel for the second time. And he said, go and sell the oil and you and your sons live on the rest. So God created a great need for oil. Praise the name of Jesus. And she and her sons were able to live on the, on the rest. I don't think she had to work another day of in her life, but she probably did, praise God, because bless God blesses the work of our hands, which she didn't have to, praise the name of Jesus. Uh, um, God can create a miracle for you right in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your pain. Just keep on trusting, keep on serving, keep on believing, keep on being faithful, praise God. All shorts must be found faithful, praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and we give God glory. I will tell you where to go shortly. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, you are so good and your mercies endure forever. Please go to, please hold your place in um, James. <laughs> James chapter 1, comments in verse 2. Please go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I mean, comments in verse 2, but hold your place. Please hold your place in James 1. Moreover, it is essentially, it's essentially. So this is something that has to happen. If this does not happen, then you may not receive your provision. Praise God. Hallelujah. Required of stewards that a man should be found faithful. We have to be found faithful. If you want to please God, we have to be faithful. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. So we must be found faithful, proven himself worthy of trust. So this, this steward must be found faithful, proven himself worthy of trust. Praise the name of Jesus. So we give God honor and we give God glory. And James the servant, he said to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trial of our faith worketh patience. And he said, let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. And I believe everybody likes the term lacking nothing. That means we have all sufficiency for all things. And people want to abound to all good works. Hallelujah. We want to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in our coming out, blessed in our going in and our going out. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But we need to be faithful. We are already blessed in those ways. But for it to materialize in the physical realm, we need to be faithful. We need to be joyful because if you don't have joy that means you've lost your hope and you've lost your peace and the joy of the lord is our strength hallelujah let's go to nehemiah i think it's four verse eight nehemiah four verse eight nehemiah four verse eight i believe because for the joy of the lord is our strength Now that's the wrong scripture. It's um, Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Then Ezra told them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet drink and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. So he's telling them to share, you know, you enjoy what you have as well as share. So you can have added joy when you share. There's joy in giving, praise God. For, because for God so loved the world that he gave. And when we give, we imitate God. Praise the name. You may give a smile to someone. <laughs> you may give a word of encouragement. Sometimes you may be walking down the road and God says, oh, just tell such and such that Jesus loves them. And you know, sometimes that person was on the brink of suicide. And just your words telling them that Jesus loves them. Sometimes they never heard it before. No one had ever told them. That um, someone loved them, and that could be the very words that prevented them from committing suicide. Praise God. So we need to be kind to others. It could be just your smile. <laughs> when someone may have lost their hope, it could have just been an encouraging word that you said, you know. Oh, just don't give up. Or the Lord might have said, told you to pray for that person. 
and then you approach them and then you say if you can pray for them and then the person may receive it sometimes they don't and if they don't want you to pray for them publicly you can still do it privately because if god told you to pray for that person you're obligated to do so praise god regardless whether they want it or not you don't have to lay hands on them you know unless god commanded you to do that so you can pray for them privately whatever you do in secret god will reward you openly so we give god honor and we give God glory. So Ezra he said to send portions for whom nothing is prepared. So it's good to give to the poor. For this day is holy to the Lord. And be not grieved and depressed. For the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. Praise the name of Jesus. Because when, when, when we're joyous, it means that we believe in the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. When, when we're depressed and we're sad and we're acting like if there's no hope. That means we're not believing God, praise God, or either you're ignorant of his promises, praise the name of Jesus. And where knowledge is available, we should refuse to stay ignorant, praise God. The people in Hosea 4 verse 6 were destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And we must not let that be said of us. Praise the name of Jesus, because we need to seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Please return to our key scriptures, <coughs> excuse me, in James chapter 1. <coughs> Pardon me. So it says in James 1, 1, I re read, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered abroad among the Gentiles in dispersions, greetings, rejoice, hallelujah. So how could he be happy? Because he was happy in serving, praise God. His joy was found in serving the Lord and serving others and standing on the promises of God. So he says in verse 2, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. So he says trials of any sorts or fall into various temptations. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then he goes on in verse 3 to say, Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith, so the trial is coming to prove your faith, you know, are you really believing God? You know, you may be saying, Oh, I trust God. I commit my life. I commit my children. I commit my ministry into the Lord's hands. I commit everything into God's hands. But as soon as the wind comes, you know, praise the name of Jesus. As soon as that trial, a tribulation, a test, a little problem comes, praise God. Is your house still standing? Have you built your house upon the solid rock, Jesus Christ? Or have you built your house upon the sand? And soon as the wind comes, praise God. Hallelujah, it's all crumbling down. Praise God. So sometimes you may be tested and it just helps us to realize, you know what? I wasn't as strong in the Lord as I thought I was. Um... I wasn't strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I was not standing on the promises of God. I was just saying it. I was repeating everything the pastor said as a parrot, but I was not rooted and grounded in the word of God. I was not rooted and grounded in love. And then you can take that and go to God and say, God, help me. How can I become stronger? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But um, faith without works is dead. So we need to act on our faith. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So he says, be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. So sometimes a trial and a tribulation, sometimes it brings out different things in different people. You know, sometimes depending on our walk with the Lord or how far along we are. Sometimes I think, oh, I am this fit giant. You know, I remember there was a time. I was believing God, I think it was to heal me from knee pain because I'd done too many exercises in the gym. Sometimes I would have been in the gym exercising like for two hours in a row, swimming, swimming for like two hours in a row. Sometimes doing like four hours exercising in a day, doing um, 2,000 steps on the stepper and things like that, just doing excessive exercises. And I was doing too much, praise the name of Jesus. And some, I was using some of the machines wrong. I had the bike too low. And instead of the... Um, gym instructors correcting us some of them were just checking people out and not correcting them praise the name of jesus when we thank god there was one um, little indian lady in the gym and she corrected me i had the uh, bike too low and she said to me oh you're gonna get knee pain so i was a young christian instead of me rejecting that prophecy 
I didn't say anything about it, but I did adjust the bike and had it a bit higher, which was better for me. And then, but I ended up with a knee pain. So um, every word that comes up against you in judgment, you have to condemn it. And I didn't condemn it. So I should have said, no, no, thank you for your correction, but I'm not going to have any knee pains or no knee problems. But thank God, um, God has healed me from that, praise God, because I had overworked one muscle and the other muscle was um, not working as much. So we thank God for physiotherapists and all the other people that God uses to help us. So we give God honor and we give God glory. We thank God for the gifts of doctors, working through doctors, the gift of medicines and stuff, because sometimes we're not just standing on the word of God. Sometimes we need other things. Listen, the word of God never fails, but sometimes um, you may believe God for a healing. You may have to go to the dentist to get some filling to relieve that pain, you know, because sometimes you're speaking to that mountain of pain and it's not going where it may go away temporarily and come back. But sometimes your faith is strong enough and you can receive healing that way. And not because you had to have a filling or you had to have an operation. That means you have weak faith or whatever. God uses a variety of ways to heal people and he does it as he sees fit. And a lot of time it's according to your faith because sometimes people receive their healing healings and then they negate it with um, saying the wrong words, you know, because sometimes God would have healed someone completely of cancer or whatever it is. And then as soon as a symptom come back, they panic and say, oh no, it's come back again, you know, and you have to reverse that because life and death or death and life is in the power of the tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof. Praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and we give God glory. So we need to be careful with our words. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. If you go quickly to Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the town and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or life. Praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and glory. So we may have made negative confessions in the past, People may have spoken negative confessions about you, but you can condemn it because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we shall condemn. Praise God. You have to speak your faith. If you sowed some bad seed in your life, you can uproot them. It's time to uproot them and replace them with faith in God, trusting God so you can be joyous. Because when, when you, you can't be trusting God and believing God and being depressed, praise the name of Jesus depression, sadness, and so on, it comes through doubt, fear, and unbelief. And that is listening to the lies of the devil who only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if there's any stealing going on in your life, stealing in your marriage, in your finances, in your happiness, in your joy, and your peace, it's coming from the devil who only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when we make a negative word or someone speaks something negative over our lives, but we don't even have to wait for it. We can still condemn it. Praise God. Or you can say, I condemn every um, word that's been spoken of my, over my life, every negative word that's spoken over my life, whether I know it or I don't know it. And I'm the blessed. And who God blesses, no one can curse. Praise the name of Jesus. And you can find that in Numbers. Praise God. So Isaiah 54, 17. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. So you condemn those things. You don't receive it. Don't accept it. If it's not lined up with the word of God, you just say, no, I'm not having it that way. Um, God's word is the final authority in my life. Since the doctor saying, you will die and not live and declare the works of the Lord. You say, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. If our weapons are being formed against your marriage, you know, it seems like if you're, Husband is never going to come back home and you want him to come back home. You know, like if your children, it may look like if all of them are going to be drug addicts or none of them are going to work or find jobs or it's been a family line in your, in your life. Um, all the women are always divorced. They're always single. You, you can say, no, no, this is where it ends. I draw um, a bloodline in the sand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, the, the, that curse, that generational curse, is no longer here because I'm a new creation in Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. All my children are married to a Holy Spirit filled men. Praise God, men of God. Praise God, people who serve the Lord. My children, they love um, their spouses as Christ loves the church, vice versa. 
person and just shall be no divorce in my family as from this day forth. It may look like if none of your family members will get saved. And you say, ah, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Praise God. So you, you can um, negate every negative force that is coming against you by speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. So the people who um, form weapons against you, it shall not prosper. They shall be shown to be in the wrong. This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, those in whom the ideal servant of the Lord is reproduced. This is the righteousness or vindication which they obtain from me. This is that which I impart to them as their justification, says the Lord. Praise God. So when you're justified, it's like if you have never um, sinned. So God says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. We just have to agree with him. You know, um, can two walk together except they be agreed? So walk together with God 